So it's a cold and rainy day in the Shenandoah Valley, but today's exciting. I'm gonna run down to Stanton and I'm gonna see the guys at Huss and Dalton Guitars. Uh, we're gonna just talk about their guitars and they've got a couple new things that are really exciting that I'm excited to see. Uh, they have a solid body. It's kind of a single cut Les Paul style. So their roots are in banjos. Uh, I think they made some mandolins for a while as well. But for the most part, they have just made really amazing traditional and even some contemporary acoustic guitars. They're every bit as good as Santa Cruz, Callings, all those amazing, really expensive guitars. Uh, when you play them, they just feel right. I actually owned one. Uh, I actually bought a custom when I was maybe 21 or 22. Uh, I bought a full custom Huss and Dalton. And I need to tell you the story. It was the wrong guitar for me. Uh, I bought it because I just fell into the peer pressure of other people. I just said, what should I get? So many of the players that I really liked at that point were bluegrass players, but I wasn't really a bluegrass player. And so I just fell prey to a lot of the peer pressure in that kind of traditional bluegrassy, folky kind of sound. And so what I got and it's now knowing myself the way I know myself at 32 is different than knowing myself at 22. I got a red spruce top, large sound hole, Brazilian rosewood, radius top, cannon. It was such a loud guitar. And this is an important thing. Like I just didn't know myself very well at that point, I don't think, or at least musically. And so I bought this guitar that was way louder than I could sing. And so that was the biggest thing is that I never could sing over that guitar. Uh, I always found myself having to play quieter. So I'm changing the dexterity of how I play to sing louder and I'm pushing myself to sing. It was just not the right guitar for me. I had it for years. I really, it sounded great. I just could never sing and play with it at the same time. And it was also hard because I couldn't play with other people because it was so much louder. Uh, than other guitars and even mandolins and some banjos. Which, that's an amazing thing. The flip side of that is for the right player, like Billy Strings, and like, it would be perfect for him. But my style has always been a little more subdued. My vocal volume is a little lower. But there's a ton of pressure that if you want to have a great guitar, well then it must be uh, Rosewood, preferably Brazilian Rosewood or Madagascar. But the thing is, those have such a specific sound that really isn't everybody. Today, there's a guitar that I dream of owning uh, from Huss and Dalton now. I've played, I've played a handful of them. I really like them. I hope that one day I'll get to order one custom and I'll take you guys along and that is the Huss and Dalton DS Crossroads. So it's a slope shouldered Gibson style dreadnought. I love how the sunburst looks and I love the round shoulders. Uh, everything about it is just subtle and cool and subdued and very stylish and pretty timeless. Overall, the majority of my guitar playing is just built on the idea that I want to do the basics really well and I think that translates into my guitar selection. I want guitars that do the basics exceptionally well in their construction, in their styling. I don't want big flashy guitars in the same way that I'm not a big flashy guitar player, but I just want a super cool, uh, really subtle, guitar. So let's go to Stanton. Time lapse time. Let's go from here to Stanton in the rain. It's a cold November day, uh, but we're going to see some awesome guitars. We're going to
So this is the final setup room. So all the Huss and Daltons that are being put together, this is where they get put together completely. So this one is going to the NAM show. And then check out this suite. This is Sinker Redwood. And now we're going to go see the Jefferson. So this is the wood that came from the Jefferson tree at Monticello, right? Yes, the tulip poplar that sat on the northwest lawn at Monticello. Man. So the back and sides are the tulip poplar. And we worked with Taylor and Booty, the pipe mm -hmm. organ builders here in Stanton. They have a laser machine, we don't. Okay. And so they were able to, we had the, the idea came from, uh, there's a Civil War story of a soldier that played fiddle mm -hmm. and he documented his, he journalized, I guess, Whoa. his experience in the war on his fiddle. It's in the Smithsonian. Okay. I think you can Google it. Walnut, and walnut neck, neck, persimmon bridge, fretboard, um, boxwood, buttons. Um, it's just beautiful. Uh, Adirondack, thermo cured red spruce top. Thank you. And this is the this is the L or no, sorry, this is the double O twelve. It is. It's the double O S P slotted peghead pyramid bridge on it. Cool, can I play it? Yeah. These are twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> okay. <laughs> twenty thousand dollars. It's so warm, like it, I mean, apart from all of the amazing parts of what it is, it, it's just really warm, really playable. Very playable. And I love the tweed cases. What yeah, made y'all decide? This is real tweed for this case. Oh, cool. And TKL built it. They're down in Oilville. Okay. Um, they do all of our cases. Uh, what? Terrible on film. It's okay. Oh, God. Just, what, you know it's a house in Dalton because you always see the tweed cases. What made you guys stick to that? Just. Um, the tweed case, gosh, that was from the very beginning, and we just thought it was vintage and cool looking. Yeah, it, it is. <laughs> they, 
they do stick out, so you do have yeah. to be careful about sending them around. Yeah, for sure, yeah, different. Like, and uh, I don't know. We've always we loved them. Yeah, I. So we were talking earlier. I made a joke about how I used to sell guitars to guys, but they would never want the new cases. They would right. like, like, no, I have to have the same right. four black cases. Exactly. So if you get a Hudson Dalton, you're just gonna have four Hudson Daltons with four tweed cases, and then we'll just trade those out. Correct. <laughs> exactly. So. Cool. Well, this has been so fun coming to Huss and so Dalton today. So fun to have you too, Jeremy. Yeah. So uh, if you like this video, go to Huss and Dalton. Follow them on Instagram. Follow them on YouTube. Watch the video of them making this guitar. Uh, there's this amazing feature on the Jefferson guitar, Monticello, uh, how this guitar came to be and what it's actually made of. So it's very cool. You yes. should check it out. Yes, indeed. Well received by the boys. It was. Yeah. Who played it? Jim and Jay, yeah. <laughs> Jim's a Telecaster guy, so it was. Here, hold on, let me take my jacket off. It was. A Telecaster guy? Yeah, so. Yeah. Unless Paul was weird for him. Jay's an old Les Paul guy. He yeah. really liked it. Freelands? Yes. yes. So this is the Statesboro. It's really clean, it's heavy, it's balanced right. Uh, the pickups sound great. They're made by Lindy Fralin in Richmond, Virginia. Um, I like everything about this guitar. And I am a Telecaster guy. I'm not a Les Paul type. I, I tend to like thinner pickups, but this has super fat, really warm uh, pickups. I like everything about this. <laughs> This guitar is super cool. It is hitting, it's going to the NAMM show. It'll be in around January, 2020. Check these out. The Husson Dalton Statesboro. Very cool. So Hudson Dalton makes me so proud to be from Virginia. They make what I really believe to be the best acoustic guitars in the world, especially in the batches that they make them. I mean, they make about 300 guitars a year. It is a serious amount of guitars for the quality of guitars that they're putting out. That Jefferson guitar was $20,000. It is made from a tree that came off of the property at Monticello that Jefferson planted. That's insane. Also, okay, so I've played some gimmicky guitars in my life. Like guitars that are like, oh, this guitar was made from this wood that's super special. That guitar was made from obscure materials. Uh, that guitar was made from really obscure materials 
and sounded amazing. Uh, for a double O to be that bassy, that dynamic, that loud, that clear, that guitar is amazing. It is, it is absolutely worth $20,000. And then you add all of the provenance and the amazing details of what it is made from. It is a good day to love guitars. Thanks everybody, I'm Jeremy, I'm the Guitar Hunter, I'll see you later.